All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be talking about chapter 2.4 and 2.5. Um, we're gonna finish out chapter two as a whole. So, so far we've gone over elements and atoms, how they chemically bond to each other to form molecules and compounds. And we talked about chemical reactions. And to be honest with you, none of what we talked about so far is really unique to human anatomy and physiology. In fact, you'd probably be able to use that base knowledge for really any science class you'd ever take. Uh, so today, let's start to get into the topic of chemistry that is essential for human life. And we're going to talk about some different compounds that are essential to life uh, as humans and really life in general. Um, in general, when we talk about compounds, we can classify them into one of two categories, organic and inorganic. Um, an inorganic compound is defined as a substance that does not contain both carbon and hydrogen. And so I want to make that distinction. This is talking about compounds that don't contain both carbon and hydrogen at the same time. A, a lot of inorganic compounds will contain hydrogen atoms, such as water, uh, hydrochloric acid that's produced by your stomach, um, but it won't have carbon and hydrogen with it as, as well. And sometimes you might find inorganic compounds that do contain carbon, although they're much rarer. Uh, a big one that I can give you is carbon dioxide, CO2. It's inorganic, has carbon, but you notice that it doesn't also have hydrogen with it. An organic compound, then, is a substance that contains both carbon and hydrogen at the same time. Organic compounds are synthesized via covalent bonds. Remember, those are the bonds that equally share electrons um, rather than ionic bonds. So it's within living organisms and including us. So first let's talk about three types of inorganic molecules that are essential to life. We'll talk about water, salts, and acids and bases. So the first uh, inorganic compound I'd like to go over is water. It's definitely the most important compound for all of life. Life does not exist without water. Remember, water's important properties come from the structure of the molecule itself. Remember that dipole nature that we talked about? Well, that dipole nature allows water molecules to stick to each other, and it's absolutely crucial to its function. Water is used as the body's lubricant, just like oil might lubricate your car's engine or like a squeaky door hinge. It cushions your brain. It helps keep the body cool by absorbing a lot of the heat produced by chemical reactions. Um, water is also considered a universal solvent meaning it allows things to mix. You've seen that before if you've ever mixed pancake batter, for instance, right? If you put the dry materials into the bowl without water, nothing's really going to get done. Nothing's going to mix. No uh, reactions are going to occur. Um, it helps deliver oxygen all over the body. It converts food to components needed for survival. It helps uh, keep your mucosal membranes moist. It forms your saliva and aids in digestion. Um, it flushes the body waste. So really, the whole body is about 70% water. In some cases, uh, some of your organs are 80 to 90% water. And so um, you know that oxygen is the most important of all the things that are necessary for life, but the next one is water. You're only going a few days uh, really to survive without water. You can survive much, much longer without food. Um, so that's that first inorganic compound, H2O. Uh, it's the most important for life in general. Um, let's talk about water's role in chemical reactions. And there's two types of chemical reactions in general. The first is a dehydration synthesis, and that's where monomers, or smaller uh, molecules, are joined together by the removal of a water. And so you'll see this monomer has what's called a hydroxyl group, or an OH to it. And this uh, monomer also has a hydroxyl group, but to join them together, you take an entirety of a an hydroxyl group and one uh, hydrogen off the hydroxyl group. When you put two H's and an O together, you get H2O. You remove a water molecule and then you can link these monomers. Uh, this would be called a dimer. If you continue to add monomers, it would eventually be called a polymer or a mini uh, unit. So mer means unit. Um, and Mono means one, di means two, poly means many. Um, and just as we said that chemical reactions can go this way, they can also go the other way. And if you do that, you just have to add the water back. And this is called a hydrolysis or cutting. Lysis means cutting with water. Monomers are released by the addition of a water molecule. Adding OH to one monomer and H to the other, you get 
mono, you get dimers or polymers that are cut up into two monomers. And so water, like I just said, it's one of the key factors of life in general. Okay, let's talk about salts. Remember, when we talked about salts, salts are formed when ions or charged molecules form ionic bonds. Um, in those reactions, one atom gives up one or more electrons and becomes positively charged, whereas the other accepts one or more electrons and becomes negatively charged. Remember, that's different than covalent bonds where atoms share electrons equally. Um, these guys are, are, are taking or giving. Um, remember, uh, salts typically dissolve in water. If you don't believe me, just go put some table salt in a cup of water and watch it dissolve. Um, if we take a look at this example, we have NaCl. Once again, this is table salt. When it dissolves in water, the positive regions of the water molecule, that's over here, uh, the slightly positive regions are the hydrogen, slightly negative region is the oxygen, uh, it is attracted to the chloride ion. So that's down here. Slightly positive part of the water molecule is attracted to the chloride ion, um, which is, is negative. Um, and the, the uh, slightly uh, negative region is attracted to the slightly positive region of the sodium. So salts dissociate into ions in water, whereas if you had put a nonpolar or polar covalently bonded compound, they just break apart into molecules in solution, so not, uh, they don't have a charge. Um, these ions are electrolytes, and you've heard of electrolytes before, maybe uh, if you've ever drank a Gatorade or, or um, gotten a cramp and someone said, well, you need some more electrolytes. Um, this property of electrolytes is critical to the functions of ions, which is transmitting nerve impulses and prompting muscle contractions. So if you've ever gotten a muscle cramp, it's probably because you're a little low on electrolytes. Um, Similarly to salts, acids and bases also dissociate into wa in water into electrolytes, so things that have a charge. But these dissociate into very two very specific things, uh, protons, H+, and hydroxide ions are negative. So hydrogen ions are basically protons or hydroxide ions, so uh, negative and positive. So uh, let's first talk about acid. Um, an acid is a substance that releases hydrogen ions, or H plus, in solution. Anything in solution means that it's, in, it's been dissolved in water. Um, because an atom of hydrogen has just one proton and one electron, it's essentially just a, uh, a proton. Basically, that's how it works in chemistry. Um, a base is a substance that releases hydroxyl ions. So these are also known as hydroxide ions, it's a negatively charged OH. Now, if you put those two together, OH and H, you get a water molecule, um, H2O. Uh, the hydroxyl ions um, or other basic substances can combine with H plus to form the water molecule and it would remove the H plus and reduce the acidity. So the more protons you have in a solution, the more acidic the solution is. Um, a simple example of where acids and bases play a role in humans is when we digest food. Uh, food. So hydrochloric acid, or HCl, is released from the cells in the lining of our stomach. It's a really, really strong acid, one of the strongest acids, um, really, uh, that we know of. Uh, it releases all of its H plus into the stomach's watery environment. So a strong acid releases all of its H pluses. Uh, whereas a weak acid might just release a few of them, but a strong acid like HCl, it dissociates into H plus and Cl minus uh, in water 100%. So this strong acid, uh, it aids in digestion and it'll kill any ingested microbes, um, bacteria and viruses that might be on your food. Um, food that's mixed with hydrochloric acid from the stomach would absolutely tear up and burn your small intestine, which is the next portion of the digestive tract. But if that doesn't happen because the body releases bicarbonate, which is HCO3 minus, it's a weak base that attracts the protons, the H plus. Bicarbonate accepts some of the H plus protons and it reduces the acidity of the entirety of the solution. And so you don't burn your small intestine because of the protons that were released by the HCl. Um, this is a good time to get into talking about the pH scale. 
And some of you may have heard about the pH scale, where the more the lower the number here, uh, the more acidic, and the higher the number, the more basic, and neutral is right in the middle at seven. But let's get into really sort of what the pH scale means. Um, the pH scale is the relative acidity or alkalinity, basically how basic it is, of a solution. Um, a solution's pH is, and stay with me here, it's the negative base 10 logarithm of the hydrogen ions or the protons that are concentrated in the solution. What does that mean in simpler terms? It's that a solution with a pH of 4 has a proton concentration that is 10 times greater than that of a pH 5 solution. So it's a measure of how many protons there are in a solution. The lower the pH, uh, the more acidic it is said to be. On the other hand, the higher this number, the more basic it's said to be, and the fewer protons there are in the solution. So for those of you who might be a bit more math inclined, a pH of four corresponds to a proton concentration of 10 to the negative fourth, or 0 0.0001, while a pH of five corresponds to a pro proton concentration of 10 to the negative fifth, or 0 0.00001. So it's basically 10 times. So between four and five, this has 10 times more proton than protons than the fifth uh, pH value. So how many more protons here? 10 times more, 10 times more, 10 times more. And if you go the other way, it's 10 times less, 10 times less, okay, and so on. So this is how the pH scale works. It's a measure of how many uh, high, uh, high uh, protons there are, H pluses, in a solution. With that being said, I'm going to stop this video here, and we'll pick up the next lecture talking about organic compounds. I think it's better if we do smaller videos, uh, just so we can take them in sort of smaller bite-sized portions. Remember to read this chapter in the textbook, that's chapter 2.4, because this is meant to supplement that material, and it's uh, more in-depth covered in the textbook, but this video is good uh, just to supplement it. So we'll see you in the next one.